I'm Moya, and it's now time for How Betty Davis Saved My Life, Life Lessons from Classic Hollywood. And guys, look, Miss M.I.A. herself, she's back. Georgia, <laughs> how you doing? Uh-oh. Okay, Georgia, come back in when you can. Um, <laughs> that's, What a way to start the show. <laughs> We had Georgia and we lost her. <laughs> oh my gosh, she cleared her throat and she like poofed away like genie or something like that. But anyway, she'll be back. Because, uh, and it's not funny. Poor Georgia, she's been going through it, man. She's falling apart. Okay, here we go. She's here back. we are. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. My apologies. <laughs> out like genie or something like that that was so you cleared your throat and just ghosted us well <laughs> anyway we are so glad to have you back miss george i was just telling the people pray prayers for georgia she is falling apart on us guys <laughs> i don't enjoy being decrepit like this in <laughs> grief but i'm i'm fighting my way back everybody i am that's right that's right so we're glad to have you back shout out to the ultimate fashion histories and fashion fridays Norman Ballinger for uh, holding it down for Georgia while she she was gone, and um, he will we'll see Norman again probably in December because uh, we're gonna do jewel robbery. Then he was like, "Let me know when you do jewel robbery because that's when I'm coming back." I'm like, "All right, cool." And hopefully we'll get Tom and some of the rest of the um, some of the rest of the pages. So we actually we love to have some of the other pages that we're with um, the silver the silver screen. Um, Oasis, uh, gosh, William Powell, Myrna Loy, uh, I'm going, uh, the, uh, I'm going blanks, but guys, we have so many wonderful, um, of course, Betty Davis page, Joan Crawford's, uh, loving Joan Crawford. There's so, so many film fatales, a film noir, just, um, black reels and, uh, back step back in the time I mean, just many 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 so uh i plan to sit down and like go through a live we're going to experiment go through all the pages at one day george i was thinking i can do this or we can do this but you know i can probably do it if, on my own if, you, if you're not available but just maybe doing a live and going through all the pages because there's so such good content on these Facebook pages, these fan pages of these classic movies and just movies in general and uh, seeing what I miss. Cause I mean, they are constantly put, I love it. These movies and these actors, some are, some are with us, some are not, they are keeping them alive. And I just cannot say thank you enough for all that you do. And speaking of classics, Georgia, we have a straight up soap opera, like on young and the restless days of our lives, general hospital types, level right what is our movie today it's in name only from 1939 which everybody who knows anything about cinema realizes this was considered the greatest year in cinema uh, we had gone with the wind wizard of oz all these great movies and this one a little bit lost in the shuffle because there were so many great movies that came out that year but you've got to see in name only uh it's a must see but yeah you're right Moy. it's part it's part uh, melodrama, but there's also a romance here, a beautiful love story. And if you're a hopeless romantic like me, you <laughs> will love this movie because the cast, production values, director are just absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's these people are at their height of acting. And we don't need to tell you who Cary Grant is and you know, some of yes the, the the true film fans they know who Carol Lombard is, um. But if 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 you if they don't know who these people are, Georgia, can you tell them a little bit about our two main stars and and Kay Francis, of course, is in this. But uh, Cary Grant and Carol Lombard, uh, can you give us a little background on them? Sure, I'd be happy to. Cary Grant's real name is Archibald Leach, and Cary Grant uh, was Leach to... is Leach, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and up to this point, Cary Grant had made a name for himself in screwball comedies, just like Carol Lombard had. And he had recently completed Bringing Up Baby with Katherine Hepburn. 
And this movie really demonstrates his range as an actor, and he can do dramatic and serious roles very well. Um, Cary Grant, you know, went on to go on in the Hitchcock movies even. He did um, Suspicion, North by Northwest, uh, to name just a couple. Um, and he is known as this amazingly suave, debonair man. Look at the way he wears his clothes. Can you think of anybody else wears plaid or tweed like he does? The man is just impossibly handsome. Right. And uh, uh, Carol Lombard, if she had not died tragically at 33 in a plane crash while she was selling war bonds, mm -hmm. she would have gone on to be an even huger star. She had already completed 70 movies by the time she died, and she was making more money than any other movie star at the time she died she was making about five hundred thousand dollars a year and she very smartly without her agent negotiated a deal to get the receipts of the returns on um, this movie that she was doing and she went on uh to do some more in another three years she was previously married to the wonderful william powell mm -hmm. and then she went and there was a big age gap or difference between them 16 years apart then she went on to marry Clark Gable. And at the time she made this movie, her husband was making a little movie called Gone with the Wind. <laughs> and I just want to interject right there. There's a wonderful movie. So I for free on YouTube starring, oh gosh, the dude who's married to um to Barbara Streisand, very handsome man. And she's dead now. Jill, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Well, anyways, a they did a like a um a docudrama about Clark and, and um Lombard. And it was really good. I you know, I don't know how accurate it was, but um Car but I, I've heard rumors of Carol Lombard, child, she was something else, not in a mean way, but she was one of the funniest, most genuine, real women in Hollywood. And everybody loved her. Everybody loved her, probably except Clark Gable's wife, who he was married to when they started having their affair. But yeah, I mean, she she cussed like a sailor. She was she hung out with the boys. I mean, uh, her and Lucille Ball were um, best friends, and, and uh, uh, one of one of the many uh, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz uh, movies about them. Um, it was Carol Lombard who, uh, in a scene, Lucy had dropped some spaghetti. They were having a big old party and she had dropped the spaghetti and meat sauce she had made on the floor. And just she was just about to just have a meltdown. And Lombard and Gable might have been, they got on the floor with, you know, with their forks and knives and started eating it. So she so she was just a real person. So go check out that movie um, with uh, Jill, what's her name? And James, what's his name? <laughs> but just search it. And it, it was really good, Georgia. Oh, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about Carol Lombard. She is one of my absolute all-time favorite actresses. And if it wasn't for her, Kay Francis would not have had the wonderful performance that she did in this film because they were friends. They had known each other. You know, uh, she had done, uh, Kay Francis had done a lot of films with her husband, William Powell. And so they were all friends. And uh, at this point in her career, although Kay Francis had done so many movies into the early and mid thirties, the Warner Brothers studio started giving her B movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, up to a certain extent, Betty Davis was now a big rising star and she was eclipsing Kay Francis. And so out of the goodness of her heart and knowing her and with her great judgment, she said, I want Kay Francis in the role of Maida, mm -hmm. who plays Clark Gable's wife. And what a wonderful casting that yeah. was to have her because she practically almost steals the movie in my oh, book. Yes. yes. And she, you know, that's one of our queens. And I, I every time I see her, I, I discovered her, so, you know, kind of late in life. You know, everybody knew Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and everybody like that. But I, I had no idea who Kay Francis was. And what, so when I saw her, I just fell in love with her. And of course she was a clothes horse. So, um, and that's so interesting. And so, also in Carol Lombard's legend, just being super generous and not um, a diva and all about herself, she got William Powell to be in one of her funniest movies and best known movies, Our Man Godfrey. 
she suggested him. He had he was just uh, still in mourning, sort of over Jean Harlow, and that was you know, and like I said, she was married to Gable, and for her to suggest him, you know, to kind of get him out of the doldrums, out of the, out of the slump that he was in over Jean um, Harlow. She suggested him to be in the movie, which was really generous of, of her because she didn't have to, you know, ex-husband and they're playing love scenes and such. So kudos to her. Oh, yeah. Oh, and why can't we have people who uh, mentor each other and encourage each other, women doing that? That just speaks volumes for her. She just did not like any pretense. Right. You know, she was very spunky. And, you know, one of the things about her, you know, my being a veteran that I really appreciate about her was that she very early after the war started in January, you know, because, uh, you know, the Pearl Harbor bombing occurred in December of 41, January of 42. She went on a war bonds tour. And of course, that's when, you know, uh, she was killed tragically in the plane crash. But the thing was, is so many people admired this woman that President Roosevelt himself declared her to be the very first woman killed in the line of duty during the war. And he posthumously awarded her uh, a Medal of Freedom, which wow. I thought, was, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah, gone too soon. But boy, mm -hmm. what a luminous, radiant beauty. And what a heck of an actress who could do right. comedy and serious roles, just like our man, Cary Grant. And right. all three of these actors are playing against type. Yeah. Kay Francis, too, because in the movies that I'd seen with Kay Francis, she was either a heroine or a victim. This time, she totally does a 180, and yeah. she plays the wife from hell. <laughs> it was delicious. Oh, my God, she's good. Daughter, as I like to say, wouldn't have melted. And her eye love this. She is one of the best on-screen villainesses, in my opinion, in movies because she's not throwing fits. Her voice barely barely comes over a whisper. She is she's almost sociopathic. And Carrie Grant, I laughed my behind off when he told her, said, he said, You must be crazy when she started threatening them. And we're gonna get into the movie. And so, yeah, let's stop all this lumbar love fest and girl let's get into this movie because it's okay y'all yeah, love the good oh i don't i haven't watched soap operas in a million years but if you love those good soap operas some of us may i i don't i wasn't around when they were on the radio but you know i'm a 70s and 80s kid so um some of the 90s but i'm a like i say young and the wrestlers in dallas and you know we always go on a falcon crest and all that so it is a soap opera, but Georgia, it was, I found it to be realistic. So let, let's talk about the plot. So Georgia, what goes on in this movie? What is this about? I did too. Well, you know, it, it, there is a love triangle. Um, and uh, so we have this very handsome, wealthy man, uh, but he's unhappily married to Kay Francis's character. And uh, they, he has a meet cute with uh, Carol Lombard. And of course, everything is just easy and natural for them. And Carol Lombard is everything his wife is not. Um, and we soon find out her real motivation for marrying Cary Grant. And it's not for honest reasons. And so Cary, uh, even though, you know, this is uh, when the code is still in effect, I think the amazing thing about this movie is that you feel sympathy for a man who falls in love. He's a married man. He falls in love with another woman, which is to me, it's amazing that they were able to do this because mm -hmm. back then everything was against infidelity. Everything right. was against love affairs, that sort of thing. But in this movie, the way it is so skillfully written and acted, you really, really feel such empathy for both Cary Grant and Carol Lombard. and. Mm -hmm. The wife you just love to hate. Man, I was sitting there. I wanted to pick up something and toss it at her. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, my God. Then, well, yeah, you get the uh, impression that Cary Grant is somewhat of a playa. And, you know, even Maida's best friend, her name oh, is. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> That thing. Now, they had some real witches in this one, man. I'm going to give it to them. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, her name was Suzanne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a, hey, if 
that is like the worst kind of best friend a wife can have. I mean, she's like making a play for her husband. And uh, the amazing Helen Vinton, believe it or not, was from and lived most of her life in Houston, Texas. Oh, so that accent was real. It was real. Okay. I, you know, I love her. I love her say, She's always uh, like this, you know. But to me, I'm going, well, you know, I'm thinking Maida. I mean, what woman wouldn't fight to the death for Cary Grant? Good Absolutely. Lord. <laughs> the man is impossibly handsome. I don't want to give away too much. But uh, I do want to say this. Cary Grant does ask Kay Francis for a divorce. And you will see all of her conniving and deceit unroll. I mean, it, you will just see it and and you just wonder. This is a very unpredictable movie. Will these two ever find happiness? You got to watch to find out. You got to watch it. But it is it is a master class. And like you said, you you want to pick something up and throw it at Kay Francis. I'm not saying what's the old saying. I'm not saying it's right, but I understand. Like you said, who wouldn't fight for Cary Grant? He was rich, he was gorgeous. And um, so I, I'm not saying it's right, but I understand. But I I get it. I totally, totally get it. But let's just park it right there. Okay, because you're right. When you said earlier, Kay Francis almost stole the movie because in every scene you were watching her because she was a master manipulator. And, and again, if you want to write a villainous, go look at this movie and I, you have to purchase it. Um, it's on YouTube for, I think, about $2.99, 3 bucks, And Apple, same price. Amazon is a little higher. Um, but yeah, if you want to understand, like if you have a very manipulative person in your life. So this is, so this is Kay Francis. And this woman has managed to wrap these three fully grown adults around her finger. And I called him Dr. Simp because she was so masterful at getting people to do her dirty work. She, she, I mean, and she, this is one of her best acting because she, you know, she's always suffering and she's like you say, she's always the victim in her movies. But this time she was a masterful web weaver. You know, I love a good witch, you know, take out the W and add a B. I love that. So if you want to write or want to study a good character, a villainess, her, and then our girl, and there's so many good villainesses. Um, of course, Betty Davis and taking it when she was a villain, especially her and Regina and the Little Foxes kind of give you this, Kay Francis kind of give you sort of that vibe. And then um, the extreme of that is uh, the lady, the actress, and, um, and, and oh gosh, the movie we did for, <laughs> I think it was one of our Christmas gifts, um, not Backdoor, George, I may have to look it up, but um, we did a, a reaction video to it, um, Secret Door, that's a shame, I can't, I'm going to have to see what it is, but she, and I, I said, I think the Disney villainesses was was based on this woman. You and I did this move. And of course I was, it's escaping me. Um, but yes, study this, this, this performance and Kay Francis, especially the garden party where she, where she totally manipulates Dr. Simp and gets him to do her dirty work. Girl, I was like, go ahead and do it. Cause <laughs> she was just so good at it. And I am not encouraging manipulation and any psychopathic behavior. What's it? So ever, this is a disclaimer. But if you have someone or know someone in your life like that, and you're like, man, I think this person is playing me, I think you might want to. Um, and there's uh Norman Hay. <laughs> he says Kay Francis is good when she's bad. And I'm typing there. Yes. <laughs> hey Norman. <laughs> she totally, totally is. So yeah, if you want to see if somebody's playing you, this is perfect, a perfect class. Now, Georgia, what do you think about that? I I girl, I enjoyed every moment she was in a, in the movie. Yeah, she was brilliant. But you know, I'd seen her in these other movies. And so this was such a revelation for me because I watched, this was the second time I watched this movie. And then I took notes because she just does a look and then a subtle raise of her eyebrow. She never raises her voice ever. Never. But Never. she can display such malice. 
And I was just floored by how she pulled this off. Yes. Um, I just thought, my gosh, you know, you know, such a contrast to Julie played by Mm -hmm. Carol Lombard because she's so caring and uncomplicated and there's no, she's just no artifice about her. And so they did a beautiful job of contrasting the two characters. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I girl, so another, so that the garden party and then, um, what was the other scene uh, when they, um, well, so let me just show you, this is the garden part. Girl, she did that when she, so, so this is when, uh, poor, and poor Julie, like I said, just so unsuspecting, like a lamb to the slaughter. And girl, look at Cary Grant's face. Girl, he's like, girl, if looks could kill, he, he is shooting lasers at her. Like, I don't believe this BS. So I've been in situations where, there's been the other man. I, I've been in more, not me personally. I, I wasn't, I wasn't cheating, <laughs> but other people were cheating. <laughs> and there was a confrontation, not a conflagration. And girl is so uncomfortable. And, and I've been in Cary Grant's shoes where you like, you know, what's going on, you know, and, you just can't believe it's happening. And I, and Georgia, do you know any master manipulators like, uh, Kay Francis? Yeah. I used to work for one. <laughs> <laughs> she was my boss. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> I, I was so what she, was, she was Corella DeVille. She ate puppies for breakfast. <laughs> oh my God. But but I just wanted to say, Cary Grant, if you watch him, you will realize why he is the legend that he is. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he plays this devil may care rascal, but he just so effortlessly nails these dramatic scenes, the witty lines and the even the tender moments. But look at what he does, because notice his facial expressions, his body language, the twists and the turns. That's yes. why Cary Grant has such staying power and why he was in so many of the big time movies because right. he wasn't just a pretty face. Right. He could bring it with his acting. And remember he played a villain too. And what it was a suspicion with um, oh, yeah. Fontaine. He played a, a, a villain. So he could, he just, you know, he, I think he was a victim of his looks because he was so good looking and it didn't take him seriously. Like a lot of women, you know, and fortunately, you know, Elizabeth Taylor suffered a lot from that. And then unfortunately she got, you no, know, she got one or two Oscars and such. But um, a lot of women, um, like Hedy Lamar comes to mind, um, you know, just so beautiful. You know, they didn't get taken seriously. So yeah, that's such a thing as pretty pr- privileged, but in certain quarters, you don't get taken seriously if you're like gorgeous or beautiful and especially in men. And I think I, I don't know. I don't know if, if you ever thought about that, but I think that's what happened to Cary Grant because he could literally do it. All. He was an action. He did action movies. He could do it all. You know, Fred McMurray, you know, he, he didn't look as good as Cary Grant, but when he was younger, he was quite handsome. He could do it all. And girl, okay, look, we uh, not too long ago when we did him and um, Barbara Stanwyck um, in the film Nor Double Indemnity. Fred McMurray should have been nominated. He may have been nominated, but I don't know who, if he was or wasn't. But the apartment. So when he played these scumbags and, you know, played again. Now you can, not so many of the Hollywood people could do that, Georgia. I, those two come to mind, but I don't know. Uh, Edward G. Robertson, even though he wasn't gorgeous, he could do it. Not so many of these actors could really be that versatile, you know. Well, you know who I was thinking of when I was watching this movie, especially the Kay Francis character, I thought a lot of Joan Crawford because I thought, well, you know, this was the kind of character that she specialized in. But while Joan Crawford's character gave us a reason to feel like a little bit of sympathy towards her. Oh, my God. This Kay Francis does not. You do not feel any sympathy towards her. Yeah. um, No. And I and and I'm glad they wrote her like that. That you did not feel any sympathy but as a wife i um you know you don't want anybody infringing upon your man 
So even if you want him or not, it's just a, it's just how it is. Oh, and, and a husband, you know, it's just, it's just a respect thing. It's just, it's crazy. It's sure crazy. You don't want him, but you don't want anybody else to have him. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So I understand. I agree with the sentiment basically, but the, the tactics were diabolical um, and, and the motivation was diabolical, but I respect it. <laughs> the tactics and now Georgia, can you, I, I also respect, she never got emotional. I mean, she cro cro shed a few crocodile tears and such. So, so this, this scene, this is a, this is a really good scene. And, and she was playing 3D chess and everybody else was playing checkers. <laughs> <laughs> she was like five steps ahead of everybody, girl. And um, she was supposed to go, she was going to get the divorce and I ain't gonna give too much away, but girl, she was playing 3D freaking chess and y'all up there playing tic-tac-toe. And so, um, I, do you admire that? For, and, and if not, you know, if not just her, but we're not admiring a psychopathic behavior, but did you, did you, have any respect for her game at all? I'd be like, hell no, she was a witch. I think I'd go on the side of, uh, hell nah, she was a witch. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I was, I was trying, I wanted to throw my popcorn at her. I just wanted to pick up something and just level her. <laughs> like, uh. Now, by the way, this. Oh, full so far. Oh, hi, hi, hi to all our audio listeners. Uh, you'll hear this, the re uh, the audio podcast of this next week. Um, she's wearing this lab may, and girl, I was like, okay, is it gold? Is it silver? This uh lab may maxi halter dress, uh, with the singe waist. It looks like she has some type of jewelry. Um, Norman, if you're still there, you can chime in and tell us what you think this is gorgeous dress i don't we'll we'll see who did the um clothes the clothes weren't too too much they were for the time period and, and they reflect the status of, of the each character um georgia what kind of dress did you think what color could you guess this dress was or did you i thought maybe it was gold yeah gold or silver and i it i'm wanting because yeah. it was chris yeah because it was christmas time so yeah let's go with gold let's go with gold um but see, I respect her game like I respect Gus Frang's game from um, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Because, yes, he was the devil in corn. I heard about it on the show pretty much with the devil. But he was a demon straight from hell. But Gus was so cool. And he got everybody else to do his MF and dirty work. Girl, I respect that. I'm sorry. I'm not saying it's right. But I know people like that. And so, Georgia, how do you counter? Like you say, you worked for somebody like that. Were you able to counter their moves? Or how did you survive that? Or did you not survive it? Or what happened? Well, eventually I moved on. Another opening came up. Uh, and so I moved. I made a lateral transfer to another office. So I was out of her grips. But I just never tried to. I tried to stay one step ahead of her. And... <laughs> That's what I did. You know, she could have used her powers for good or for evil, and she chose evil. So I was like, <laughs> just go sink to that level, be the good person that you were meant to be, you know? Yeah. That's what I say. But, you know, one of the things that I really thought was cool about this movie was um, the legendary Irene did the fashions. Oh, and wow. I looked at the Carol Lombard's outfits, and, you know, I, I at the time they would have been considered rather casual, but now they seem kind of extravagant by today's standard, mm -hmm. but I thought, you know, that those clothes that she's wearing are so fresh and modern. I, I thought, oh my God, I'd love to wear something like that to work tomorrow. Oh yeah. And, and, the, and then the, the way they did Kay Francis was, I think that was supposed to be the epitome of the way that a chic society woman would dress at the time. Okay. And so she, her clothes, I think more reflect her personality because they are, Except for the gorgeous gold lame or silver lame dress, Norman her clothes are much. Has gold, uh, uh, George. He he votes for gold. Ah, he votes for gold. Yay! Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know her clothes. She's got the wider uh, shoulders, and you know they're much more, I think, tailored. 
okay. and structured and uh, which would befit her social standing and her personality. And so, um, you know, she, I, I think this was a little bit different. It was more of a departure from the way we'd seen her dress in some yeah. of her other movies, but it really fit. So they did a good job with reflecting okay. her personality and her wardrobe. Yeah. I was trying to find more of her wardrobe, like full on. Um, but they don't have too much. She wore a lot of nice hats in here, like almost kind of pill box before they were pill box hats. Uh, and I saw a lot of Russian, uh, like the uh, country Russia. I, I saw a lot of kind of Russian influence. Uh, let me try to find that as well. Um, now, so back to my original question, I have had master manipulators in our family. And um, I was a child when most of it was going on. But then I kind of encountered some of these people as an adult. And oh, yeah, some people on, like I say, on a job. And they were nowhere near level. One of them was kind of Kay Francis. No one was near level uh, Gus Frang on uh, on Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul. But um, I, 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 how can I put this? Um, as an adult, I thank God He's given me the uh, the ability. What they call spiritual discernment, and you know, you suppose and and atheists and whatever non-believers, Christians, just plug your ears up, or you are more than welcome to log off or whatever. But you know, you see, give you the the gifts to you know see people's see through them and 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 when they speak look beyond what they're saying and really digest and understand what they're saying and um when i when i get that 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 manipulative vibe from somebody i just ask them what they mean because so so something's wrong with me georgia because i i'll ask them beyond the question i'll say, I'll say oh so you mean this or you want you're talking about that and that diffuses the whole situation, or I do not engage like that. Um, and then they move on to another victim because they're like, "Well, I can't have any fun with this." Because it is fun. Because because Kay Francis was playing cat and mouse, cats, you know, cat's paw with, with all these people. Er, almost everybody in this scene, she had manipulated, and she was the puppet master. Y'all, y'all have to see this movie. This is it's so modern. I was like, man, Georgia, didn't you feel like this movie was contemporary? I did, surprisingly so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really contemporary. So look at those hat, the hat, and look at the the prints. I love the prints on um, mom. This is a uh, mom's hat back there. Um, Cary Grant, and James Coburn. Shout out to him. Oh, Charles, Charles Coburn, I believe as it is. Yeah, shout out to him. Um, he he he's. I don't know if they dyed his hair. There's a wig, but this, you rarely see him with not white hair, but he was good. He played uh, Cary Grant's father. But yeah, girl, this, this scene, guy, y'all got to see, because this scene was just like kaboom. It was literally Kay Francis marking her spot, lifting her hind legs up and say, hey, this, <laughs> I'm marking my territory. I'm, and I want all y'all mofos to see it. I, I'm, I, George, I know, I respect, I'm sorry. It's, it's horrible, horrible person. Okay, so the end, because we kind of wrap it up. Girl, did you expect that ending? Like the the exposure, the, the, the I don't want to say too much, but the the revelation of it all. Did you expect that? Because I I hadn't seen it in a while, and I totally forgot. No, no, but I was like, I, I wanted to cheer, you know. Was, mm -hmm. The whole thing just really surprised me about how it ended. I did not see that coming, um, and I was still so taken by the fact that. Even with some pneumonia, Cary Grant looked impossibly handsome. I went, right. The man is all, yeah, we don't want to give too much away. But yeah, he, he got okay. ill. The man was just good looking. And I mean, and he has that cold black. Even when he got older, you know, obviously he was older. You know, those people smoked and drank a lot. But um, let me, I wanted to find like kind of like that Russian influence, Um, one of those. This is not totally well. Let me look at it. go do another one. Um, but yeah, he was still a, a gray fox. He was and girl, he, remember he pulled that young woman because he married Diane Cannon. Oh, and yeah. She could have been his grand his granddaughter because he was mad old when he, he married her and had a baby and all this kind of stuff. And so um, 
yeah, let me let me share this one. Kay Francis have kind of like this Russian type romantic, almost Dr. Shivago before Dr. Shivago type. So I don't know. Uh, uh, Norman is still there. Was there was there kind of like a, Ru a Russian revival as far as fashion? Because the the Russian, you know, World War II hadn't happened yet. And so, make, you know, there's always these periods when, um, like, we saw Kay Francis when we were Norman and Tom, and she had this Tudor outfit on, this medieval gown on. So they, these influences, but yeah. So this might be like some kind of wool, maybe. And girl, like, I'd have stole all the clothes. I'd have got fired from my job because I'd have stole all the clothes. They're like, where is the whole freaking wardrobe? Oh, we saw Maya, like, loading it in the back of her truck. <laughs> A car or whatever. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, y'all ain't gonna use these no more. <laughs> y'all don't need these no more. But yeah, it's just dress to kill. Look at a turban. So I guess it's yeah, like a turban type deal. And just killer clothes horse, clothes horse all the freaking way. Um, oh, it says Persian lamb collar and sleeve. Norma, how do you know that? Well, yeah, you know, for those of you, maybe it's your first time. So Norman is like. A, a fashion guru he's well he, obviously he studies all this stuff and he also um uh is a costume designer is the is the way, way to say it. i hope i'm not saying it correctly but girl persian land i'd have stole this i would have told totally stole it and gotten fired and it'd have been worth it because i look fabulous but <laughs> anyway george i'm gonna give you the last thoughts um yeah he says turbans were very popular i tried to wear a turban and i'm like a dang fool george you ever tried to wear one no, no. After washing my hair and getting out of the shower, I do. But <laughs> <not in> public <laughs> urban, <laughs> that don't count. <laughs> no, you have to wear it in public for it to count. <laughs> nope, can't say that I do. But uh, I just want to say this has such a satisfying ending in many ways. But you got to watch because. Yeah, man, it's it will tear you up. This is a, a heartrending movie to look at. You've got some powerful and heartbreaking performances. Um, and I just want to say I really love the way Carol, she's Carol Lombard has got these close ups at the very end. And I want to tell you, pay particular attention to, way she, to the way she handles the final scenes. Many are, of them are an extreme close-up, not a false note here. Yeah. And I just, I, I tell you, there's like, she plays love, loss, fear, even a little jealousy. It's all there. It's just beautifully done. Uh, and then there's little Peggy Ann Garner in her very first movie. Yeah, that kid was kind of a hoot. Oh, she was hilarious. And so <laughs> yeah, I, she, <laughs> she says, is that, is, is that his mother? Yeah, yeah. Kay Francis <laughs> throws down a gauntlet. She shots fired. Comes to visit uh, Carol Lombard's character, and when she leaves, little cutie pie. See, that's how I was. Now I ain't gonna lie. This little girl and Norman, you you know what I'm talking about. This little I, little girl was more believable than the little girl in the shadow of a doubt. They should have totally cut that role out. You know, sorry she wouldn't have had a job, but this little girl was more believable because she was precocious without being unrealistic she wasn't annoying she was like a realistic child but, and i'm saying that because i was like that because when when k francis left she was like is that his mother is that alex mother Car um carrie grant girl almost fell out the bed laughing i was like oh no <laughs> did not just say that so even a little girl know y'all was faking it <laughs> she know y'all had no sexual chemistry whatsoever <laughs> oh my gosh so that sounds like something i know I, i've if I didn't say something almost similar to that, I've say, said stuff like that it, to, to Pete. And I said it to one of the adults' face, and I was about her age. Uh, I just had a quick story. My my uncle, one of them, who is married to the master manipulator. Um, I was six, this little girl's age, and it was Christmas. And she came over skinning and grinning like a French Quarter mule in my face um, because I was like the princess. I was like the spoiled brat of the family, and everybody knew it. So she came over, skinning and grinning at my uncle. I was the apple is I, I was like the favorite kid. Okay, I'm just telling you what it was. He, and he would bring me these toys and all that. So of course I loved him. So my, my mother said, oh, Moya, this is your um, uncle's, and I'm not going to say their name, your uncle's new wife, so-and-so. And she's skinning and grinning all teeth. Oh, hey, Moira. And kids could spot a phony. We smell a phony, you know, when you're a kid a mile away. 
And um, so she looking at me. And first of all, don't disturb me whilst I'm playing with my dolls. Strike one. So she came over skinning and grinning. And I saw right through her, Georgia and the rest of the uh, audience. I said, I don't like her. Like that, girl. Ooh. The record scratched. People put down the beer. The party, the turkey started tasting differently. My mom was like, boy, you don't see that. <laughs> Girl, the like Al Green record scratch and they're like, they're like, my mom, like, Ma, you don't say it. So she hated me. Well, it's 40 some years later. She it was all it was on and popping between me and her. And and I was right. Because later on, my mom, you know, like hearing them talking, like, you know, they could say how they really felt. They were like, you know, they just nobody really liked her. She she but she was like made her. She was like K Francis. So anyway, y'all, I'm sorry, I had to steal all that tea. But Georgia, I'ma let, let you have the last word. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I, I just wanted to say I, I you had hinted at, at this earlier, but you know how life imitates art. The thing about this movie was that um while uh Carol Lombard went through the exact same thing. She was waiting for, you know, uh, I'll say his name, Clark Gable's wife to give them the divorce before mm -hmm. they could. And so they married the same year that this movie was made. Oh. And so it, I thought it was kind of interesting that that happened the same mm -hmm. year the movie's made. The two of them, Clark Gable and Carol Lombard, got married and she went through the exact same thing, waiting on the wife to get that divorce. Mm -hmm. So. Right. And, and yeah. I'm a wife, so I'm prejudiced because, girl, you ain't going to kick me out of my spot without some kind of. And I and I and I think it's been so long since I heard it, heard that story. You know, Mrs. The soon to be ex Mrs. Gable, you know, they gave her some assurances and some, you know, some doodads and what have you, you know, like that. So, girl, if you if you don't get moved out your spot, at least get something, you know. But girl, but Claude Gable was like a little gold digging social climber himself. We'll save that for another late for another time. But if you want to know what I'm talking about, um, there's this great YouTube channel. Um, and shout out to Steve Hayes and Ashley says so as well. And and um I always Claridite Radio. I mean, they have good stuff on there. Um, and some others I I'm sorry, I'm blanking on, but uh I think it's called Vintage. Hollywood or something like that. They they talk about Clark Gable. Just do a search. And girl, Clark Gable was because he had been married at least twice before, and he would marry older women, and he would like social climb and you know, and gold. He was a male gold digger, according to these people. According to these people, I don't know. The only thing that I'm probably in the minority about this Moya is that I would have loved to have seen Carol Lombard and William Powell. Uh, longer together, I I would have picked him over Clark Gable. <laughs> well, you know, she said he was a bore, and she did. yeah, and he, the man. Look, she said, look, he was so anal retentive and had OCD, obsessive compulsive door. His socks, he would put them in a drawer and it would be lined up like you know how cigars or something are lined up like that. And she just said he was an absolute bore, and I'm like, and you know, we saw she's a firecracker, so he wasn't doing it for her, homie. Like uh uh, and but Claude yep. Gable in the movie with uh the guy who married to um Bob Streisand and Jill, what's her name? I can't remember. Girl, they girl they, they was getting down. Uh, Claude Gable and Carol, it was very sexual their relationship. It was love, but girl, they was getting it on. Okay, really, Georgia laughing down. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, the movie really emphasized that and i was like okay well y'all making me blush all right it wasn't anything vulgar but i mean it was a highly no. sexual relationship so you know hey it, it more like hey most delicious relationships are you know but we're gonna leave that alone we're gonna leave that alone georgia is there anything else that we want to talk about in name only go guys please look at this and let us know what you think come on hit us up on facebook youtube we want to know what you think georgia what else you got for us just the thing to watch on a very cozy, amazing autumn day. Perfect movie. Yes. Yes. You will love it. It goes by so quickly. And it's, it's not just, it's, there's several scenes and there's several uh, layers to this. You know, it's just not one long, big, you know, it's, it's nothing repetitive. Just when you think it's oh, it's acts, that's what I'm trying to say. Several acts to this. When you think it's over and it's not, it's so it's really, really, really good. Well, guys, that's all we have for you today. So you guys take care. 
for how Betty Davis saved my life, life lessons. This was full of life lessons, wasn't it, Georgia? Good night, nurse. Yes, it was. Delicious, like you said, Moya. Delicious. Adios, Norman. Thank you for tuning in. And the rest of the people who watch us, we really appreciate you. All right.